for week nine in the NFL. We've got a pair of teams that have only matched up six times. It's a series tied at three games each as the Vikings visit the Ravens next on EA Sports. The first two months of the regular season down. What will the final two bring us as we're off in week nine? Tyler Lockett now with a return. Oh, oh, that's not okay. And some good oh my special God, teams coverage as they bring them down just outside of the 15. Their outfits threw me for a loop. I am not used to the purple bottoms white pants. Oh, my God. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. It threw me for such a Kaepernick gonna throw. Oh, he's gonna take a shot right away. And yeah, this is oh my goodness, goodness. He pulled it in yeah, that, that threw me for a loop so much. I thought I was playing as the oh play my god. Because right our outfits are tell almost the, truth, the same. Partner. You didn't think he was coming down with that one, team. did you? Come on, tell me the <laughs> truth. <laughs> no, I didn't. I'll tell you what though. A one-handed grab of that length. Talk about giving your team a little juice. Oh, big time. I mean, everyone's going to be excited about that one, whether you're on the field or not. It permeates its way through the entire team, and I can't wait to see what they do on the next down. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. After the incomplete pass here now is second and ten. Working from the gun, it's Kaepernick. They'll let this go for the end zone. And oh, mm -hmm. that would get a light up incomplete. Nearly an interception in the end game. zone. Probably it's should have been. Third down coming up. Not the desired outcome, but probably won't be the last time we see him take a shot downfield. Those balls are just so and oh, that had nearly an opening drive INT, but it does fall oh, incomplete. Yes. Not the way he wanted to start this ball game as it brings up fourth down. The kick by Lutz is it's good. good. And the Vikings have a 3 0 awesome. lead. Had just the one big play on the drive, but that was enough to put him in field goal range. And one big play of what they hope will be many others throughout the game. Every team has a different target for the number of plays like that. Those explosives that we talk about, that allowed him to put points on the board on that drive. Let's see how the rest of the game goes. Following the main field goal, Lutz to kick it away. Taken in at the three. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. And they'll begin by running the option. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. It was Harrison Smith there up from his safety spot to make the play behind the line. This defense is a difficult one to prepare for. One of the best in the league. They'll come at you from all angles. And they did a nice job there stopping him for a loss. Now on second and 13. Jones. Now the pressure comes and he goes down. Just inside the 10, back at the 9. That's Yannick Ngakwe with a sack. Two plays so far, a run and a pass attempt, and both have gone backwards. Probably not how they drew that up. Not at all. <laughs> Looking for a better play coming up on third. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's going to look deep for more. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit. They took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. The Ravens send their punter out now. As his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Oh, some strong running. 35 yards that time on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Well, the Vikings taking the field here for their second drive of the game. And you know, it's certainly a lot of football left to play. We're not into December yet, but right now where we stand, they're in first place in their division, looking really good and looking to be a threat come January. And are you all those yeah. caught in the end zone? Touchdown, Minnesota. 
DeAndre Hopkins with touchdown number 20 on the year. And the Vikings are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. Pretty good job. Quite a show of arm strength that? right there. That was in the air for a long time, and it was on target, too. And as that ball was hanging game. in the air with the receiver yeah. streaking down to meet it, and watch mine. here in the stadium, <laughs> you could just sense the crowd thinking, yeah, oh, no. And their worst fears so were realized as that one turned into a long touchdown. Was ten to, well, lots on for the point ten after. To freaking nothing. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10 zip. They certainly made quick work of that, ultra quick work. One of the fastest drives you'll ever see, just one play resulting in the touchdown. So an early 10 nothing lead for them now as they kick it away. From the six. And he'll go down as this drive will start at the 25-yard line. The Raven offense set at the line for this next drive. And they were winners the last time they took the field, which was two weeks ago. They had the open week last week, so this is a squad that should be really refreshed and ready to roll. I would agree because when you get that open week after a victory, it does wonders for everyone. Obviously, your body get a chance to heal up, but your mind as well. You feel good about winning, so now you can get away from it for a few days, put down the playbook, you know, turn off the film, just be you. Enjoy that time away, and then you come back ready to go. This defense for the Vikings, they were very good in the win over Dallas a week ago. And no matter what's done throughout a ball game, it always comes back to blocking and tackling. That's the essence of football. But I think it's hard for people to understand just how difficult it is to tackle, especially open field. Very few missed tackles on tape that I saw last game. This team does a nice job of getting their opponents on the ground. So they give up the completion there. But defensively, Charles, you're going up against a quarterback here who's had some moments, but really a lot of ups and downs in the early part of his career. What's the plan against a guy like this? Well, you want to rattle him first and foremost. Bring some people at him, a couple extra guys in the pocket, see if he can handle it. The second thing, you want to make him think. Show him one look. Go. And he fires Ooh, one. It's intercepted. Snatched Picked it. off by Casey Hayward. And he will take this one home. It's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. It goes yeah. without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. That's a ball he would like to have back, and it lands right in the lap of the defender from there. He doesn't have very far to go before he gets to the end zone, and he got there in a hurry. <laughs> Lutz to try to add the PAT. He's got it, and it's 17-0. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So an early advantage now, and a good one. 17-0 our score as they kick this one away. <laughs> This one fielded at the five. And he'll get it up across the 20 to the 21-yard line. The Baltimore offense at the line set to get going. And fresh off the pick six, they've got to forget about that quickly. In this case now, the guy throwing the ball, He's got to be like what we talk about with defensive backs who get beat for a long touchdown. Short-term memory, right back out there doing the things that he does best and knowing that taking care of the ball is paramount. Here's his opportunity. It all comes back to those defensive backs for the formal D, former DB, right? I, I don't know where that comes from. It yeah. just kind of emerges out of me for some it's reason. It's deep in there, right? Yeah. <laughs> this will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. Seventeen nothing. Our score after one. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. Now Jones. This one complete to Scott Miller, and he'll get this up to the 34-yard line. 
when you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. First and 10, it's Edwards Alaire with it. And he'll work this forward for about three at second down. So, Charles, you talk about this offense as we play here in week nine of the 2021 season. Normally, you're slipping kind of past the halfway point, but now with the season expanding to 17 games, you kind of think the teams might look up and say, gosh, we still have a lot of football left to go. No doubt about it. Remember, they've had their open week already, so this could be a straight shot all the way from here on out. To me, the best coaches, they tell their teams, hey, I'll take care of you during the week. You just leave it all out there on game day, and I'll make sure you're ready for the next one. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. They'll run here with Edwards Hilaire. And the running lane's non-existent in this first half as they'll stop him behind the line. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. Some of these play calls. I think they're a little conservative, but you know me because it's easy to sit up in this booth, right, and make all the calls and, and think I'm going to be correct. But I would like to see them open things up because otherwise this defense is going to gang up on the run and set them down. Got a man complete to Miller. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? Throwing. You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not bad. streaking towards him. Had a little arc on it. He's, he's got to find bad. a way to get his head around and make a play. Because I'm used to the freaking purple on top the and then line. white on the bottom. I'm not used to the purple on the bottom and then white on top. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown yeah. drive against him a few minutes ago. I keep thinking I'm playing the other game. Because they've come out and the tempo. A nice throw there. And they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. Edwards Alaire now off the option. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder, once we hit halftime, as we do all season, we'll send it down to Jonathan Coachman in Orlando. He'll have all the stats and scores from games in progress around the NFL. The best multitasker in the business, the coach. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. And that's now four completions in a row. A good bounce back following the interception last drive. Certainly not letting it affect him, that's for sure. And we all know interceptions are going to happen. So the Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. Jalen Smith gets in there to drop him for a loss of 13 yards, and it's also fourth down now. Now the Ravens bring out the field goal unit here. This. this from 54 yards away. And that one's not going to get there. Not enough yes. juice and ambitious effort, no but it's well short. And this score will stay right where it is. And that's the risk of the long field goal miss here at this stage of the second quarter. You give up great field position. And that gives them one more opportunity to make something happen and something big. And we've seen crazy stuff happen at the end of halves. Looking for more there on first down, but this throw downfield incomplete. Well, you know, this club, there were some reports earlier in the week, and most have heard this by now, the so-called unnamed sources that were saying, all is not rosy in that locker room. There's whispers that one or two guys, CD, have kind of had enough of how things are going and have been going. How would you handle that as a coach? Well, you and I both know all the coaches that we've dealt with and come in contact with. They'd love to get their hands on those unnamed sources, wouldn't they? But they know that that's not possible, so I think they've got to go in there and make sure that this isn't a distraction. They also know that once the grumbling starts, it becomes a slippery slope and it's hard to stop the fall. But I think you need to sit some guys down and say, hey, look, we're still hoping to be a playoff team this year. We need you guys to be bought in with what we're doing. Come on, let's get on board. And a fake here. Direct snap to the up man. And he's not going to get to the marker. And that's a turnover on downs. 
A little trickeration there, but it doesn't fool this defense. And the Ravens get the football back and in great shape. Throwing Jones. This one caught by Isabella. And they'll wind up getting this to the 37. Gain of nine. Now the Ravens going to use one of their timeouts. As it comes with 22 seconds to go here in half number one. Looking to throw again on second down. Jones over the middle. That's hauled in by Isabella. The Ravens going to use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. Looking to throw. Jones. Throw right side going to be caught by Waller. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get it with 10 seconds to go before halftime. First red zone chance now for the Ravens. They've got a first and 10 at the 11. They'll look to throw again. Now a swing pass. It's Edwards Alaire. And he gets halfway home from the 10 to the 5 on a pickup of 5. So we hit halftime with our visitors, the Vikings, taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, all right, Brandon. Thank you very much. Hi again, everyone. Let's get you caught up with what's going on around the NFL as we are officially into the second half of the season. We'll kick things off down in the bayou. NFC South matchup between Atlanta and New Orleans. And it's the Falcons who are out in front in the second quarter. Mac Jones with a couple of touchdown passes. From there, let's head to AT&T Stadium as we check out the Cowboys at home in Dallas. And they trail the visiting Denver Broncos in that one. Patrick Mahomes has thrown a touchdown pass there. Lastly, let's get you to Charlotte, North Carolina. Check on the Panthers at home at Bank of America Stadium. And they currently trail in that game against the visiting Patriots. The Patriots still in a dogfight, but this would be a good victory for them if they could get it. With that, we take a look at the next-gen stats in that first half for the Vikings. And even though they've got the big cushion, I would imagine they'd like to see a little more out of their passing game. Pretty pedestrian numbers through two quarters of play. Meanwhile, for the Ravens, they did not have quite the same amount of success in the passing game that their counterparts did, as you get a look at the numbers there. Both teams going back through their game plans, making their final halftime adjustments. And for the call of the second half, we go back up to Baltimore and rejoin Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The Ravens set to receive the football trailing here as we resume action in the third quarter. This will be fielded inside the five. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. <clears throat> Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And you have to think, Charles, Thank down three scores detail. already. The right they need pitch. to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid mm -hmm. chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way so to put like together a touchdown drive tackle, here. They need to be whatever, smart, like fast, efficient, get the ball to the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Back to throw. Jones. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. But the passing windows are just not there. That's just another example of how great this defense has been all game long. And that's exactly what a top 10 defense can do. They can really change the game tempo and frustrate you as you try to execute off that. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Sam Hubbard, he's the one to get him, and that is sack number seven for him on the year. I think we've seen this before. If someone's down three scores, that situation there... It's just going to add to their growing frustrations, don't you think? Yeah, bad number three right now. Three-score game, third quarter, three and out. Not what they wanted. And you can tell on the sideline, those faces are getting a little bit longer as this one goes. Now it's Lockett. A very good punt, but a 16-yard return. And possession will switch hands first and ten. 
So here are the Vikings to take over. Their win streak at six coming in and counting as they've got the lead right now beginning this drive first and ten. Don't you think about it. And oh, that nearly their first pick of the game, but it falls down to the ground incomplete. We're in Baltimore, third quarter action, second and ten. The first carry now for the BYU man, it's Jamal Williams. Oh, he's got some breathing room. And he is finally brought down at the Ravens' 10-yard line. A big pick up there on the run. He had his eyes on the end zone once he hit the secondary, but they're finally able to slow him down. Yeah, and I've got to look at this one from the defensive point of view. You just mentioned finally able to slow him down. They've got to figure out a way to make that at the point of attack, at the line of scrimmage, because once he gets through, he's shredding them. So now, following the big play, they've got a first and goal all the way down at the 10. Williams. Oh, didn't know I was running that. Didn't know I was running that. And this time, they're able to bottle him up as he'll stop him at the line of scrimmage. Officially, no gain on the play, and it's second down. They give it to Williams, right? Oh, right. Jesus. And they'll go backwards here, losing yardage to the 14. It's a loss of four. Now third down. To throw is Kaepernick. Yeah. He's got his man. It's taken That's in for a freaking touchdown. Brandon Cooks. That's the second funny. touchdown on the season. And the Vikings that are going to add funny. on to their lead. And a great example there of just getting the feet in in a tough spot. Even it seems like every year these uh, guys get better at this. Well, I think the, the drills get better, that they work on training camp, <laughs> off-season work, OTAs. But also a lot of these guys have dance backgrounds, ballet backgrounds. Yeah, we remember, of oh, course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs. I think they're going to at least take a look at this. It was in there. They're taking you can a see the foot in the purple. In bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How is the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it the all comes together. The foot was in the freaking thing. The dude fell in the purple. So they Good. called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video oh, review. Sorry, so they had it stay. right. I quit this soon as possible. That is a freaking thing. Bad. Lutz with the extra yep. point. 24 and the lead is now 24. So that drive spanned five plays, and it all culminates in a touchdown for like Minnesota. Until fourth quarter. So. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Yeah, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay. A fairly short kick from the 14. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Let's go. Let's go. And Baltimore is set for this next possession. They have been struggling. I would imagine at halftime they went through some possible changes. Well, those changes aren't working, so now where do you go? I think that now it's much more in their head. And what I mean by that is just the Vikings after him and they get there for the sack. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down on the sack. He was still looking through his progressions and going through his receiver options. And while he was doing that, the defense got to him quickly in the pocket. And it was a great example of zone coverage. Well executed, well coordinated. All the receivers were covered, and he couldn't evade the rush back in the pocket. They lose two on that last play, so things get even tougher. Third and long coming up. Well, sometimes despite the best planning, the defense actually has a plan as well, and they blanketed everyone on that play. They were able to close it down and spill him for a loss. Got some room at the 30, and finally brought down at the 34-yard line. They get a big amount back, 18 yards, but they'll still look at a fourth down now. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks, don't let them get there, and they've rallied and made the tackle.
The Ravens send their punter out now as he's on here to punt it away. Returnable for Lockett. A nice return there of 11 to help mitigate a good punt. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. A big play that time through the air. 35 yards. And that is going to do it Let's go, for this third Let's go. quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. A give to Williams, running right. Had a pretty good run there as he gets seven down to the 33. Now I think we can get used to seeing more of that in this fourth quarter, especially if they're having success on the ground like they did there. Yeah, I think back when we met with the head coach in, in preseason, and all he talked about was building a bully. And I think it was this situation he was envisioning. Trying to ice a game, plenty of time left, but being able to give the ball to his big... And he will score! Touchdown, oh, Vikings! Jamal Williams hitting double digits with his 10th touchdown of the season. And the Vikings add on to their lead, and it's looking like that win streak is going to extend another week. Alonso looked to add the extra point. Now this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. It only took him two plays there to find the end zone. The last one, the long run, getting him in for six points. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And no alley to be found. The coverage was solid, and he's dropped at the 18. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. Now they were coming off the extra week of rest, but this team started sluggish, and it really didn't get any better from there. And trailing big here in this fourth quarter. Here's a pass swung out left to his running back. And they'll get him down here at the 23. Give him a gain of five on the completion. And it'll bring up a second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling him almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. The Ravens on third down, three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and five. Looking to throw, Jones. He'll fight his tight end, that's Waller. Call it a loss of two there on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. Excuse my snarkiness here, but isn't the idea of completing a pass supposed to mean you get downfield and gain yards? Especially on third down. Yeah, that one. How about the defense? Figured that one out in a big way. Yeah, they completed it all right and lost yardage. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. A big connection on that one. 32 yards. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. It's caught. It's Miller. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there is going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. Stops short of the 25, but that second effort got him a couple extra. Now that's the type of play that gives you a chance to win. Nothing forced downfield where you don't have a guy open. Swing it out to the back, on maybe even check it down, whatever you want to call it. 
Gain of five. You're just trying to get four on first down. They're ahead of the chains now. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. Oh, the ball is out. Edwards Alaire lost it. And this belongs to the Vikings. Okay, this isn't one where you want to take the game tape and hold it up as an example, do you? I mean, you talk about frustrating all the way through. And that last error, I think that crystallizes it, doesn't it? Absolutely. That's been representative of their entire game still being shut out. And now out comes Minnesota. And they have to be feeling pretty good. Comfortable fourth quarter lead as they take over following the fumble recovery. They'll try and run down some clock with Williams. And some space here. Escapes the defender. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. The CD, I mean, there are touchdown runs, and then there are touchdown runs, and that one certainly fell into the latter category. Now that deserves a couple exclamation points. And the thing that stood out to me was his ability to continue through the initial contact. How many times do we see runners get slowed up and not get what they can on a run because of that first contact? But he kept the compass pointing in the right direction, kept the legs churning, and turned this into a huge play. And he covered a lot of ground on that one, as evidenced by the final total there on Next Gen Stats. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. Here's a throw out wide complete to his running back right side. So they'll get nothing out of that play. And that'll make it second and 10. Well, that was a simple throw and catch. But even with that completion, zero yards gained. So they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss. But that window closed quickly. Throwing again on second down. Jones finding Edwards a layer once again. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. The Ravens send their punter out now as he'll punt it away for the fourth time today. Taken from just outside the 30. Good blocking there. Nearly sprung him as it is. It'll go as a 19-yard return. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and 10. On first and 10, it's ETN. Breaks, breaks the tackle. He's got room to run. Oh, he's got a little daylight. And he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown this thing is ugly just a terrific run there charles from a running back who is so compact and powerful and that strength was on display there yeah this is a guy who runs with such balance and control i mean he went through that early contact just like he was driving over a speed bump and he's able to continue his way downfield and wind up in the end zone lots to try to add the pat And this one was over a while ago as they just add on to their big lead. So they hit pay dirt on just one play. The long run, the scamper, and a very nice scamper into the end zone for the touchdown. After the touchdown, Lutz to kick it off. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the inline. 
Baltimore about ready to go on offense. We certainly had a sense coming in here that these guys were in for a tough one on the road. That has been how this ball game has played out. They trail big as we continue on now here in this fourth quarter. Oh, he dropped it. And that's pretty indicative of the way this one's gone. Well, it just seems like all game long there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. Here's Jones on third down. Trying to fit it into Moore, but it's intercepted. Picked up by Jonathan Jones. And his guys are going to take over at the 39-yard line. Yet another mistake after the interception there. And gosh, you look up at the scoreboard, uh, they just got to be thinking this one cannot get over fast enough. It certainly can't. And also what happens when you get this big of a deficit, you're supposed to make all the right throws, right? You're supposed to try and obviously get the ball to your own guys. But being down this big, you also take even more chances. And in this situation, that hasn't paid off for them at all. On the other sideline, jubilation and laughter. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll be taken down here, and that is how this one is going to come to an end. So the final seconds have ticked away in this Minnesota victory. And I tell you what, Charles, this might be about as good as it gets. They were incredible. Yeah, offense was in fine form. The defense threw the shutout at them. I think they worked in concert together. What I like about the offense was they held the ball pretty well. You know, time of possession, exactly what they were looking for in this one. And that helped out their defense. Didn't have to be out there the entire time. So when you do that and you're out there fresh playing, off a little extra spring in your step, and it showed up in this one. They had a ton of spring in their step. Impressive victory. So for Minnesota, they moved to 7-1 on the year with the victory. And another road date awaits them next week as their opponents will be the Los Angeles Chargers. Meanwhile, for Baltimore, the struggles intensify as they drop to two and six now on the year. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head down to Miami to take on the Dolphins.